Well, it's great to be back here amongst friends and colleagues. Um, as some of you may remember, I spoke at the October conference. And I spoke about my time in an Islamic boarding school. I spent five years there before I was expelled for having a camera. And I spent one year in Pakistan where I learned chronic tafsir. I come from a Sunni background, and uh, the schools that I attended were mainly Wahhabi, Salafi, Diobandi, sort of a mixture. In this uh, talk, I will focus on Islamic schools, but that's not to suggest that the, pro the issues which face Islamic schools don't exist in other faith schools also. The two, the, I'm going to focus on two issues um, of is Islamic faith schools which don't get spoken about enough. The first one is the hijab, and the second one is music. Now, firstly, I would like to say that I do find it problematic and I find it unfortunate that children are being separated from one another based on something such as religious affiliations of parents at one given time, because we know that religious beliefs change over a period of time. The faith schools, faith schools in our society are deeply ingrained in the education system, and the, and the government does actively endorse them. I mean, for instance, the prime minister's daughter will be attending a Christian faith school. Now, in the school that I attended, students were offered very little opportunity to learn secular subjects. The main objective of the school was to install in the students discipline and a personality that would ensure that they would follow the Sunni Islam favored by the governors and the principal. Secular subjects were restricted to English, maths, science without evolution or sex education, ICT, Arabic and Urdu were also taught. Now, in terms of national curriculum, private faith schools do have the right to not teach national curriculum. Greg Hurst, who is the education editor of The Times, writes for private schools. And he says, private schools have few legal requirements on what they must teach children. The proprietor must have a written policy on the school's curriculum and evidence of how this is used to plan lessons. The actual content is, however, entirely left to the school. They have no obligation to follow the national curriculum taught and maintain schools. Now, the reason why I want to focus on music is because that is the one subject which is most likely to be dropped across the board. If you look at Islamic schools, they, you know, some, one, one might teach history, one might not teach history, one might teach history, and one might not also. But music is more than not going to be dropped. It's going to be replaced with something called tajweed, which is... Um, a few rules on how to recite the Quran and nasheeds, which are Islamic songs. But for anybody who has studied music, it's quite a broad discipline. And the replacement subject, which is offered to Muslim children, is nowhere near as enriching or culturally sufficient. And, one moment. Now, I find it very difficult to have this conversation sometimes with people because I don't know how to explain to them what it feels like to be told that you're not allowed to listen to music. You're not allowed to listen to it in your home, which if you live in a boarding school, it's everywhere. You're not allowed to listen to it in your bedrooms. You're not allowed to listen to it in your classrooms. You're not allowed to listen to it in your day-to-day -day lives, and you don't have the right to play the piano or learn to play the violin your career opportunities are limited that way. I'm sorry that I haven't been able to speak too much about the hijab, but I just want to say that in terms of uniform, most Islamic schools, actually all Islamic schools, enforce the hijab through this concept of calling it a uniform. There are many girls who have told me over the years that they have been unhappy with the way that they have to wear hijab. Even as an adult, even when I had become an atheist, when I was living, no, when I was studying in an Islamic college and my hijab was slightly loose, I was told off for this. And in some areas in the UK, there are boarding schools in which CCTV cameras have been set up in residential corridors now. So what that means is that not only do the girls have to wear it in the surrounding areas of the school, they also have to wear it now inside their classrooms, and they have to wear it in their residential corridors, which is their home. So imagine being 11 years old, 12 years old, you wake up in the morning, you go in to brush your teeth, and you have to put this on now. 
and then you have to walk to the bathroom, and then you can take it off, and then you come back to your room. And the government says in their, in their guidelines to their inspectors, do not conflate the hijab as something oppressive, but rather as a symbol of piety and modesty. I think we have to think twice about this. Both these, the music issue and the hijab issue do relate to the notion of freedom of expression, and that is being taken away from British children, thousands of British children every day in this country. And it is really important that we do something about it. Thank you. Thank you.